Why is strength and conditioning such a dirty word when it comes to running? Yes, we all know that running is the fun bit, but so many of us, me included, spend so much of our time avoiding it like it's a dose of monkeypox. But the truth is, if you're in this game for life, you should be running towards strength and conditioning, not away from it. And as I see it, there are five big problems with making strength and conditioning a core part of our running journey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these five points and I'm going to dismantle the arguments until I've robbed me, uh, I mean you, of the excuses not to do it. Because if you want to be a faster, stronger runner who can run further and with less injuries, then it's strength and conditioning all the way. Okay, so here's the number one excuse I think we probably all have if we're honest with each other. It's, it's time. And I'm going to break that down and I'm going to make it not a thing anymore. Mainly so I believe it too. I think the reason time is a blocker for most people is, is for three reasons actually. It's lack of understanding of what's actually needed, it's priorities, and it's fear. I deal with not really knowing what's needed at the end, but I'm gonna deal first with priorities and fear because I actually think they're bundled together. Let's be honest, the majority of us only have a certain amount of time in the week to train that we've allocated to training. And the priorities and fears bit comes from the fact that running is our priority, it's the bit that we love. And there is a fear there that if we don't run, if we do something else like strength and conditioning, then we're somehow gonna be going backwards because we're not gonna be doing the thing that we love. And actually, that's what I would, call a false economy because if you substitute one run, just one run with some strength and conditioning for example, then the quality of your other runs is going to increase because what you're doing is you're building muscle strength, muscle endurance, you're building the body's ability to kind of negotiate its way through injuries. But people have the fear, I suppose, that by somehow not doing the running bit, they're gonna go backwards. But sometimes you need to take a perceived perceived step backwards to go a lot further forwards. But actually, it can be a lot easier than even that because if I look, if I show you the time right now, then I got up 25 minutes ago to come downstairs and just do a really quick 20 minute strength and conditioning routine, which I try and do each morning. That to me is more effective than setting aside a whole hour where I would have to miss a run. This way, I'm not missing any runs and I'm just getting up 20 minutes earlier. And if you genuinely don't think that you have time in the day for this, you couldn't possibly get up a little bit earlier, and I get that, some people can't, then do me this experiment, do me this favor. Look at your phone and see how much time you spend on social media. If it's even up to 15 minutes in a day, then that there is an area where you could improve and you could actually use it to benefit your body. And we all fall into the trap of social media, don't get me wrong, me too. But I think you're kidding yourself if you say you don't have time and you're even spending a small amount of time just browsing through Instagram or you're watching this video on YouTube. But do watch this video on YouTube. There's a common misconception that to complete a strength and conditioning session, you have to have access to weights or machines or even have a gym membership. And sometimes that's easy to hide behind as a reason for not doing it. But it's why it's called strength and conditioning. It's so multifaceted. Your body is an excellent starter weight to work with, for example. Squats, press-ups, planks, core workouts, you literally don't need a single bit of equipment and could quite happily do that indefinitely. You could make it more challenging in so many ways without ever thinking of equipment. Squats getting too easy for you? Then work one leg at a time with lunges or reverse lunges or split squats. Or if you don't like that workout style, I'm a big fan of workouts like yoga or pilates and there's still no equipment needed. But if you do want equipment, it doesn't need to break the bank. These resistance bands are awesome for targeting muscles and cost about a fiver and a mat is about 10 or 20 quid and even entry level weights like dumbbells, they're affordable, nothing needs to cost the moon. I mean, it can if you're passionate about this aspect of your running, but let's face it, not many are. And this is all without even touching on the other aspect of conditioning like recovery tools. Again. They can come out at different price points and they can fulfill different needs. Most of my usage revolves around my pitiful body and how it seems to want to sabotage me at every turn, but I won't let it. And it can be as easy as using a massage ball to nail that knot. 
or a full-on massage gun just to provide some hilarity in the Bridges household. <laughs> So strength and conditioning doesn't have to be a dirty word because it can mean so many things and you absolutely don't need equipment to start your journey. So it's time to start your journey. I think a lot of the time, one of the reasons that people don't make strength and conditioning stick is that they don't have that foundational strength underneath. And what I mean by that is when you first start doing strength and conditioning, it's, it's certainly if it's something you've never done in your life, then the first few times are gonna be really difficult they're gonna hurt for days after. You might not even complete the exercises or be able to complete the exercises that you're doing, but there's ways around that. You shouldn't see it as a blocker to doing strength and conditioning. Like with anything, when you start, it's gonna be really hard. It does get easier. I mean, certainly the first thing I'd advocate is not to start with weights when you first start doing strength and conditioning because if you don't have the right technique or you don't have the strength to hold the technique, adding weights into the equation, it could actually end up injuring you rather than making you stronger because adding weight to a poor technique is a quick way to not even just overuse injuries but traumatic injury sometimes i mean why not start with body weights until you know a technique there's no harm in that in fact i do body weight workouts the majority of the time now anyway and you know even body weight you can break down into easier parts component parts until you build that foundational strength take pull-ups for example when mary was training what we started was with she got herself into a pull-up position in a chair and then just lowered herself down slowly so she was controlling the movement building the muscle pattern and the foundational strength but she wasn't yet ready to pull herself up but what about the classic squat easy just put a chair behind you lower yourself into it to start with get the squat technique right obviously and then try and stand up out of the chair and over time either lower the chair or take the chair away it comes really quickly i promise you the strength comes quickly i suppose ultimately what it comes down to is when we start doing strength and conditioning from a place of never having done it or done it a very long time ago let's say i think the early days when it hurts when you don't really know what you're doing it can put you off because there's pain and discomfort and you actually think that that's a negative thing and it's not it's the body growing and it's the lack of foundational strength and i'm here to tell you that it does get easier it should not be seen as an excuse to not do strength and conditioning because when you do it it hurts it's going to hurt and it's okay you're going to build the core strength you're going to build the strength endurance in your muscles you're going to be able to run further longer faster it's not an excuse to avoid strength and conditioning trust me it's coming from a place where every now and then I dip out and dip back in and it hurts again, but I know it's okay. I'm not even gonna try and make this point myself. What I'm gonna do is hand you over to my go-to YouTuber, the person that I go to when I need to know anything about this particular subject and so much more when it comes to running. One of the OG YouTubers in this game and a good friend of mine who knows a hell of a lot more than me on this subject. Oh, and if you are not subscribed to his channel, then you definitely need to right now. Over to James Dunn. Thanks Ben. I think most of us runners know deep down that we need to be doing regular strength and mobility work, both to help us become stronger runners, but also, perhaps more compellingly, to help us avoid trips to the physio. It seems like one of the hurdles that prevent people from doing regular strength exercises isn't the lack of willingness to do so, but instead the overwhelming number of different must-do exercises and workouts that magazines, social media and other sources tell us runners that we need to be doing. If we did them all, there'd be simply no time left to run. So my approach, especially when talking to a runner who's let this type of work slip completely, is to focus on three to five simple exercises, nothing complex, that together address the key areas that as runners we need to constantly work on. Areas like single leg balance and stability, hip mobility, ankle stiffness and core control, as well as basic strength exercises like squats, lunges and step ups that hit all the major lower body muscle groups. Obviously, if you have specific areas you know you need to work on, or rehab and prevention exercises that the physio has given you before, then prioritising these always makes sense, but you should be able to hit all of the important areas I mentioned a moment ago with a 15-20 to 20 minute routine to be done three times per week. If you want some more ideas to help you get started, there's a video on my channel with three simple exercises that will help you become a stronger runner. I'll ask Ben to leave a link to that video in the description. So, of the five big problems with making strength and conditioning part of your life, part of your routine, this 
is the one that I struggle with the most, bar none, easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you all of the tips, tricks, techniques, strategies I've used over the years to try and make it stick, to try and make it a more frequent occurrence in my life. And to a certain extent, these have worked. Some haven't, but I figure if you have them all, you can find out what works for you. And I'm gonna start with actually telling you what's working for me right now, what has stuck. And it's all about, for me, up energy moments and down energy moments. See, what I've found is that on a down energy moment, which is things like coming home from work when you're tired, that's a down energy moment, or just training at the weekend, but you've been sitting down for a while, that's a down energy moment. I'm, it's much easier for me to tack on strength and conditioning to an up energy moment, which is things like when I've just finished my run, I know I have the energy to do a stretch routine. So I tack it on to an up energy moment. And it's the same with a strength and conditioning workout. If I wake up 20 minutes earlier, when I've got the full energy of the day, that's an up energy moment. I'm already active. I do my strength and conditioning then when my energy's on the up, not on the down. That's what's working for me right now. So when you combine that with what we spoke about earlier, which is the time element, what you have is me coming in from a period of action and tacking on another piece of action that will also be positive, and also me knowing it's only gonna take 10 minutes, it's 20 minutes. I can factor 10 minutes of stretching after my run in my head before I even go for the run. I know it's part of it. So that's how I currently succeed, and it works. But it took me a long while to get here, so let me tell you some of the other things that have worked in the past. So I'm gonna link a video right here, right now, which is my motivational toolbox. It's the kit that I use to get myself out the door when I wanna run, but it's equally as applicable when it comes to strength and conditioning. There are just some tips and tricks like the five second rule, countdown from five to zero, or the 10 minute rule, give yourself 10 minutes and you can quit after that. Loads of stuff like that, that will help you get this done. But there's one more thing, probably above all else actually, I would think. So in order to counteract my occasional, okay, regular lack of willing, I've found that my strength and conditioning workouts have to be three things. They have to be purposeful, I have to feel like it's helping my running, so 10,000 pull-ups, that's not gonna work. I have to be enjoyable, I have to like what I'm doing, and that shifts over time, but it's very relevant, and they have to be repeatable, easy, something I can just not think about and do. If I can nail those three things, I'm so much more likely to get it done even in low moments of willing. And that ultimately is the key. You can't be willing all of the time. Hopefully this video has helped you in some way break down your barriers or hurdles to starting or maintaining strength and conditioning. If it has, then consider subscribing, but no hard sell. And if you like the video, you're probably gonna like this one as well, which is the hard truths of training with heart rate. And of course, as always, the solutions. And now on Weekly, I'll see you next Sunday. Thanks for watching.